Okay, hello, hello. Oh, everything's working, all right, good. Uh, hello, evening, I'm Sean, Librarian Writer Geek, uh, Librarian Writer Geek on Twitch and YouTube. Probably better to follow me on YouTube because Twitch is like, I don't get a lot lot from, what the heck is, okay, my camera is weird now, I don't know, what the hey, okay, whatever, my camera's being weird, oh well, it's been being weird all day, or for a while, anyway, uh, Librarian Writer Geek on Twitch and YouTube, YouTube, uh, sctadson.com, my personal website, I posted, did post something there, I want to say this week? might have been last week I don't know I'm maybe going to post some try to post some stuff in November but you know I'm also doing like hey I should like use this month to actually get writing done even if nano not doing it actually doing NaNoWriMo because NaNoWriMo is official NaNoWriMo is like bleh. oh and uh, SC Tetson on Blue Sky I think I'm also as librarian writer geek on Blue Sky you know, where you can change the, your name, whatever. Whenever I'm on there, that's the only uh, social media I'm really active on regularly. Uh, anyway. Um, so yeah, not going to talk, try not to talk too much about stuff. Um, but I did get a, co I did get a comment on one of my videos this week, and that's Hey, that's always cool. Uh, comment on stuff. Tell me thoughts. That's great. Great. I'm very, you know, try not to get, you know, whatever. Um, and it was just some, and it was just somebody being not happy with the amount of like room noise in the background, whatever that. And I wish I had a solution. <laughs> I wish I had a better option. Um, like, ugh, even right now, I'm gonna turn it down. Turn down the stuff on that a little bit. Okay, so I don't. I'm not peeking quite as much. Okay. Um, but yeah, unfortunately, my audio setup is. I have my kind of okay separate mi standing mic USB mic and I have my webcam mic and I, I honestly did a test earlier today it's like okay well the, the separate mic it's a lot quieter but that means it's a lot quieter for everything including you know my voice and I don't want to be yelling into the mic mic just to be heard heard and the webcam mic actually picks up my voice at a fairly normal not projecting super hard level so sorry that's what I'm gonna go with and I, I don't you know I, I don't have a great recording setup this is literally just my bedroom so I, I apologize if it's not if you're hearing pick, hearing a lot of stuff, I don't know. I the bit tests I did earlier didn't seem like it was that bad. I don't know. Maybe your audio setup is a lot fancier than mine. I that's <laughs> oh well. Oh, well, Valerie's in chat, chat lurking and writing on stuff. Uh, so I will provide some uh, hopefully entertaining. Or maybe not too entertaining because I don't want to distract you while you're writing but also huh anyway wait yeah um so last week I did not stream because I, I don't know I was sneezing all day I don't know why I just sneezing a lot and uh, you know decided to take up take a Benadryl is it one single tiny little Benadryl to try and, you know, clear me up, calm me down, whatever. You know, I'm sneezing, I'm a little feeling stuffed up, whatever. 
and it hit me so hard. Like, you know, it's like, okay, right, I'm, I, I was not feeling up to streaming at 9 o'clock last Friday, um, I was probably kind of nodding off a little bit around 8.30 or so, so that's, that should tell you how I was do, doing, um, so yeah, me, me streaming while trying not to pass out was, would probably have not been a good time. It, it might have been entertaining for you, but it would not have been a fun time for me. Me. So, apologies for that. Uh, anyway, more excavation of Hobbs Barrow because, uh, yeah, it, so I unintentionally ended up taking a week off in October anyway. Oh well. But we're going to get back to the, back to the excavation of Hobbs Barrow. We'll see how far we manage to get. I don't know how long this game is. So, yeah. All right. Let's see how this goes. Reads. Hello? Oh, dear. Do I have sound? I... I'm going to try something. Oh, shoot. Okay, we seem to have hit a bit of a technical difficulties. One moment, please. Ah, okay. There it is. I don't know why... Sound wasn't working. That was just odd. Oh well. Anyway. Let's see. A sweet little hen, plump and well groomed. There we go. This is fine. We're fine. It's all good. Okay. Hello. A carved stone has been affixed to the door. I think it depicts a crescent moon. Father, what do you make of this? A peculiar adornment. I've not seen any like this in Bewley. Though it does remind me of a passage by the Bard himself. <clears throat> it is the very error of the moon. She comes nearer Earth than she was wont, and makes men mad. Ooh. I'm pretty sure that's not a fellow or I guess a merchant of Venice? The merchant of Venice? A splendid comedy. But that uh, particular passage is from the great Othello. Damn. Out of two, Miss Bateman. Hmm. There's an achievement about this, I'm pretty sure. Like I'm sorry, I need to check this. I need to check this, dang it. What? Da, 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 da. Ah, okay, scholar, okay, that's Ah Othello. A pair of thick woolen trousers. Anyway, all right. Mr. Shoulder? Is Thomasina Bateman here? I'm here in Bewley as discussed. Maybe try again. His hearing probably isn't the best at his age. Okay. Mr. Shoulder, are you home? It appears Mr. Shoulder is not at home. Mm. Curses. Uh. Perhaps you could try the handle. It, okay. It's locked. 
Hello, window. No sign of life. None. The window is nice and clean. The dwelling is by no means abandoned. This must provide a charming view across the moor. That glove looks familiar. I wonder if it matches the glove I found behind the plow and furrow. Um. How do I do the thing? Mr. Shoulder has stacked blocks of wood neatly beneath this small lean-to. Very neat and tidy. Are a pair. Does this mean Mr. Whoa. Shoulder was in the alley last night? Why didn't he come inside mm. to see me? Curious. Perhaps he's gone for a stroll. Possibly. I'd suggest you call back later, my child. I myself must make my way back home. I have some matters to attend to with the church. Shall right. I accompany you back to Beaulieu? Uh, yeah, I want to look around a bit. No. You go ahead, Father. Thank you. As you wish. Farewell, Miss Bateman. I hope Mr. Shoulder finds his way to you. Thank you for your help, Father Roach. My pleasure. Parting is such sweet sorrow. Romeo and Juliet. Correct. That I shall say good night till it be morrow. Lord be with yes. you. Well, Mr. Shoulder, you've brought me to Bewley, and now you're nowhere to be found. Mr. Shoulder must have dropped the matching glove last night. What was he doing in the alley? Rather rude of him not to come inside and see me. The trousers feel damp, freshly hung, or still wet from last night's rain. Slightly damp. A woolen undergarment. Ah. He looks much too unruly to be picked up. You're a sweet little thing, aren't you? Oh. Dick. Okay, fine. You're a sweet little thing, aren't you? Yeah. Awesome. All right. Okay. Mm. Can't go around. I can't. I've come a long way to meet you, Mr. Shoulder. Please open the door. I think this might be genuine sterling silver. Room two, the plow and furrow inn. Look around the area and see what I can find about Mr. Shoulder's sparrow. Okay. I've no desire to lug a block of wood about the countryside. As I trudged back to Bewley across those cold moors, I made a new resolution. Fine. I would find Hobbs Barrow myself, with or without Mr. Shoulder. Mm. The train! That must be Kenneth. I should go and meet him at the station. Mm, fine. I believe there is an achievement for sitting here. Okay. I don't know. Maybe not.
Hmm. He was supposed to wait for me at the station. <laughs> I'm looking for my assistant, Kenneth. Oh, I. His train has arrived. Not a single soul disembarked the last train, Miss Bateman. Impossible. Was that not the midday train from London by way of Derby? Aye, it were. Mr. Price were here, unloaded a few crates. But no Kenneth. Not a soul. Hold on. One of them crates had your name on it, Miss Bateman. A great big one it were, with... A red ribbon. Aye. What is Kenneth playing at, sending my equipment but not himself? Mm. Curses. Where is my crate now? Mr. Price took away all the crates on his cart. Who? Mr. Price. He's the postmaster. Where can I find Mr. Price? He lives above the storeroom, just north of the plough and furrow. You'll see it. Yeah. There's a Royal Mail plaque on the wall. Thank you. Yeah. What can you tell me about Lord Panswick? Oh, you've heard of his lordship then? Yes. <laughs> Do you know him? Aye. He comes into the village from time to time, gives sweets to the children, hires young men to work his land. He's well liked around here. I sense some hesitation, Mr. Tillett. Well, we kind of have an unspoken agreement with his lordship. He looks oh. after us, provided we leave him alone. I don't follow. He likes his privacy. Some people do. No one is allowed to visit him. Do you mean to say that he's a bit eccentric? No. I've heard people got fired at when approaching his manor uninvited. Good grief! Ah. But is this true? Well, I won't be the one to find out. I'm looking for Hobbs Barrow. Hmm. Hobbs Barrow. It's why Leonard Shoulder invited me to Bewley. He thought I might like to excavate it. Oh, I. I heard about a Hobbs Barrow somewhere out there. There's some old stories around it. What stories? I can't remember. Mr. <laughs> Tillett, please. This is important. I'm awfully sorry, Miss Bateman. I'll try to remember. If he invited you here, then I'm sure Mr. Shoulder will tell you all about it. That's if I ever get to meet him. I'm sure you will. Where can I find me? He lives above the store. You'll see it. Thank you. Farewell for now. Tara. I don't think anyone. A local cobbler. A local dwelling. Uh -huh. That must be the postmaster's storeroom. Hello. Good day. I haven't seen you in Bewley before. I'm just visiting. Lovely. It's nice to see a new face. We don't get many visitors. My name's Henry. Henry Long. Nice to meet you, Henry. Thomasina Bateman. Wonderful. What a treat. Mm -hmm. You seem in a good mood, Mr. Long. It's just lovely to see a new face. Where are you from, Miss Bateman? Mm -hmm. Originally, a small town on the outskirts of Derby, Mr. Long. Though I currently reside in London. London? I've never met anyone from London. How very exciting. Have you lived there a long time? It's been quite a few years now, yes. I've heard that the air there is so heavy with smoke, it makes it hard to breathe. Is that true? Some days. Oh, you must miss the fresh northern air. Well, you've got that in Bewley. No factories out here. Such things are a blight on his creation. I were born in this very home I stand in front of. Bewley is in my blood. Why would I ever want to leave? Especially now I can meet new folk thanks to the railway line. Right, anyway. I'm looking for Mr. Price, the postmaster. Oh, 
Mr. Price, my lovely neighbour. I'm afraid you've just missed him. Curses. I saw him wheeling a large crate into his storeroom just there. It must be mine. I really need it. Have a look through the window to see if it's yours. Where did Mr. Price go? I don't know. The man were in a hurry. I know he has family in Bakewell. That's miles away. Did he leave by foot? No, by horse. He must be a few miles down the road by now. Curses. When will Mr. Price be back? He didn't say. Could be tonight, could be a few days. How infuriating. I told him I'd keep watch of his storeroom. And I'm a man of my word, Miss Bateman. I shall not budge from this spot. Right, anyway, let's maybe ask a couple other things. Do you know a man named Leonard Shoulder? Aye, funny old fellow. I hear he lives way out on the moor somewhere. Have you seen him recently? No, not for a long while mm. now that you mention it. Why do you ask? It's a long story, but I was to meet him in Bewley. He invited me here. Well, I must thank him when I see him for inviting such an enchanting young woman. You flatter me, Mr. Long. I'm looking for Hobbs Barrow. One of those old burial hills? Yes. Do you know where it is? Believe it or not, I haven't set foot on the moor since I were a child. Why is that? I've got all I need right here in Bewley. And we are all truly blessed with the railway station which brings us lovely new faces. Your opinion of the railway station differs widely from your fellow townsfolk, Mr. Long. I've not met anyone particularly keen on it. That railway line is the start of a new era for Bewley. Mark my words, there's much to protect here, but we need new blood. I hope that some of you visitors will actually stay here permanently. Why is that? So I have new friends to talk to. <laughs> some people here don't want any new friends. Cyril Farnaby, the miserable old sod, is the worst offender. I've had the pleasure of meeting Cyril. He really dislikes the railway station. Absolutely miserable he is. I've tried to convince him many times that the station will help Bewley. He just doesn't understand. I met him last night in the plough and furrow. Aye, the scene of our many debates. Blimey. I could go for an ale right now, actually. Can I buy you a drink? Really? No. Wait, do you think Mr. Kemp will let me open a tap? Perhaps. You could always ask him. Hmm. I shouldn't leave anyway. Mr. Price is relying on me to keep watch of his storeroom. Goodbye. Don't be a stranger. That's not terrible. There's uh -huh. my crate. Kenneth always ties a red ribbon to it. I can see an envelope tucked behind the ribbon. Perhaps it can help explain Kenneth's absence. I'm going to have to get in there. Okay. I can't think of anything else to talk about right now. Really? The postmaster isn't home. But my crate no. is in there. You'll have to wait for Mr. Price to get back. Uh. There's nothing else I... I should be going to stand there, allow me to open a tab. Find a way to the storeroom. Are you there without attracting too much attention? Hmm. Alright. My assistant has not arrived as planned. Oh, is everything alright? I'm not entirely sure. Am I to keep a room for him just in case? If you could hold it for one more night, Mr. Kemp. As you wish. What can you tell me about Lord Panswick? A most charming man, Miss Bateman. He looks after us here, eh? a good fellow. Where does he live? Panswick Manor, on the moors. No uh. visitors allowed. His lordship likes his privacy. I've decided to find Hobbs Barrow without Mr. Shoulder's aid. Are you sure that's a wise idea, lass? What other choice do I have? I have a feeling he is avoiding me. Do you know where I can find the Barrow? No, sorry. 
I say that on my mother's grave, Miss Bateman. I found Mr. Shoulders home, thanks to the help of Father Roach. Wonderful. So you've met our vicar then? Mm. Yes, I did. An interesting character. Indeed. So, right. did old Leonard apologize mm. for his absence? Not quite. He wasn't home. What is that man playing at? You tell me. Anyway. I'm sorry to ask this, Mr. Kemp, but could I please open a tab? Still not in your purse? I'm afraid not. My assistant hasn't arrived as planned, so I find myself in a bind. He must have put the money in my crate, which is currently being held in Mr. Price's storeroom. Well, as you know, I run an honest establishment here, and I do trust you. Oh. So, yes, I'll open an account for you, to be Yay. settled at the end of your stay. Yay. Of course. Thank you, Mr. Kemp. Now then, I'll be needing something of value as a deposit. I thought you said you trusted me. Wow. Aye, it's not personal, lass. One can never be too cautious. How can I open a tab again? Leave me an item of that. I'll give it back to you at the end when it will be time to pay the piper. Goodbye. See you. Sure. Will you accept this silver cross pendant as a deposit? Can I take a closer look at it? Aye, silver. That'll do. Thank you, Mr. Kemp. Can I get you something to drink? A tankard yeah. of your finest ale, Mr. Kemp. There we are. That's two pence on your account. Thank you. Most agreeable. Okay, then. Mm hmm. That was interesting. Hello. What can you tell me about Lord Panswick? Uh, Not to say, except don't be sniffing around his lordship's manor. You'll end up with a round of shot in you. I beg your pardon? You heard me. Just mind your own business around here. I really must find Hobbs Barrow. What did I tell you last time? Not to be found digging around in those things. Goodbye. ta -ra. Hello? Uh, yes? What do you know about Lord Panswick? He gave me some sweets once. My friend says that Lord Panswick has special trees at his manor that grow sweets on their branches. Do you think that's true, miss? I think that's very unlikely. Me too. Are you sure you know nothing of Hobbs Barrow? Is that like a wheelbarrow? Never mind. Goodbye. Yeah, okay. Goodbye, miss. Good day. Hello, miss. What do you know about Lord Panswick? Not a lot. I know he's in charge around here. Does he come to the village often? Not really. He has a manor out on the moors. Have you ever been there? Evans, no. Villagers aren't allowed there. Why not? Don't know. It's just the way it is. Hmm. Are you sure you know nothing of Hobbs Barrow? I really must find it. I'm sure. Goodbye. Bye, miss. Good day. Yes? What can you tell me of Lord Panswick? His lordship commands much respect around here, lass. Keeps me busy with work. Why do you ask? Just curious. Are you Ooh. sure you don't know where Hobbs Barrow is? Sorry, lass. Thanks for your time. Ooh. Aye. Speak to you later. Hello. Good day. Hmm. Father Roach asked me not to discuss that with Mrs. De Plancy. Fair enough. 
Right. What do you know about Lord Panswick? Wretched man. They say he is restoring a chapel near his manor. But for whom and to what god, I ask? Is he a man of faith? Pardon? <laughs> I've barely seen him set foot in St. Edmund's. It doesn't stop him from acting as our god-given ruler. Stay away from him, pet. Don't get yourself tangled up in local affairs. I certainly don't intend to. Are you sure you don't know where Hobbs Barrow is? Hobbs what? Never mind. Why did you call Lord Panswick wretched? He hides in that manner of his and cares not for his people. I've heard stories whispered in the pews, you know. What kind of stories? That he shoots people on sight. Anyone that strays onto Panswick Manor. Good grief. Yet he will walk into the plough and furrow and buy ale for all and be hailed as our protector. <laughs> I answer to God and God alone. Forgive me, pet. I shouldn't get so worked up. Not at all. I appreciate your honesty, Mrs. De Plancy. Thank you for your time. Lord be with you. Pop in here real quick. Mm. Okay. So, yeah. It's locked. All right. Anyway. All right. Hello. Good day. Can I buy you a drink, Henry? Really? Really. We can talk more at the inn. But I told Mr. Price I'd keep watch of his storeroom. Doors have locks for this very reason. Mm. You're right. One drink won't take long. I shall take you up on your offer, Miss Bateman. Let us make our way. Oh, am I going to get drunk? The rocket weren't Stevenson's only design, you know. Before that, there were the Blucher and the Locomotion. But my favourite would have to be the Lancashire Witch. I believe he built that in 1828. In Newcastle, oh. of course. Wow. Well, that's me. I better be off. Wait. Ta-ra, Miss Bateman. I couldn't even get a word in. He likes a good chin wag, our Henry. He certainly does. Hmm. I must say, last night has rather put me off using these toilets. Fair. A decorative plate depicting a goat. A decorative plate. This one depicts a cat. A decorative plate depicting a serpent. A decorative plate. This one depicts a bull. A decorative plate depicting an eagle. A decorative plate. This one depicts a dog. A decorative plate depicting a bear. Hello. Good day. Can I buy you another drink? I suppose one more ale won't hurt. I shall take you up on your offer, Miss Bateman. Let's oh, make our way. How many times are I going to have to do this? The rear wheels are powered by coupling rods. Would you believe? The boiler had two flue tubes. Two! There were nothing like it. Well, that's me. I better be off. Wait! Ta ra, Miss Bateman. Uh, how many times do I have to do this? Curses. I'm starting to feel somewhat tipsy. I'm here to excavate Hobbs Barrow, not Hobbs Barrels.
Henry Long can talk, can't he? <laughs> He's a colourful character. The man drinks like a fish. He certainly does. I've seen him drink this place dry and still be up to tend his garden at sunrise. The man can truly hold his ale. Goodbye. See you soon. Okay, this is not so hold up. Thought. Nope. I can't think of anything else to talk about right oh, now. Ah, come on. Get both of them going. Come on. There's nothing else I wish to do. Uh, there has to be a way. Hello. Good day. Goodbye. Don't be a stranger. Oi, keep away from that door. I promise uh, Mr. Price I keep an eye on his storeroom while he's gone. Uh, I'm gonna have to just I'm gonna have to get this guy drunk or Hello. Good Bye. day. Can I buy you another drink? I suppose one more ale won't hurt. I shall take you up on your offer, Miss Bateman. Let us make our way. Steak, I'm gonna be like Bugley is the latest of many additions to the Midland Railway line. Speaking of change, I hear the whole frontage of Derby Station is being rebuilt. Designed by an architect by the name of Tubshaw, if I remember correctly. Well, that's me. I better be off. Wait! Ta ra, Miss Bateman. God damn it. Mr. I... Long can really put away a drink. Thank goodness I've switched to water. Oh, good. I have nothing else to... Good day, sir. No. What? What? How many times do I have to do this? Am I going in circles? This feels like this can't be it. This can't be the answer. There has to be something else. There has to be something I'm missing. Because. I don't want. Sturdy looking barrels. No. I'd rather not go into. I, I just. There has to be a solution. I come on. I can't think of anything. Uh, one, I have to look up an ant the answer to this, but I feel like I'm gonna have to. Hello. Good day, little one. What's your name? Wally took Myrtle. Pardon? He took her and ran off. I hate him. Is Myrtle one of your dolls? Yes. My favorite. Mummy made her for me. She's so beautiful. Wally is the worst brother in the whole world. I'm sorry to hear that. What okay. is your name, little one? Jane. It's a pleasure to meet you, Jane. My name is Thomasina. 
This is a lovely little beck. It's where we get our water, miss. Oh. It's good for drinking and cleaning. Uh -huh. Your dolls look lovely, Jane. Thank you, miss. I love them very much. Today was their bath day. Uh -huh. Why did your brother take Myrtle away? He's just jealous because Daddy is letting me come with him to the market tomorrow. Wally oh. thinks I'm Daddy's favourite, so he took Myrtle from me. What if he rips her to tatters? What if he feeds her to Mr. Bryden's goat? Don't worry, Jane. I'm sure he wouldn't do such a thing. Where did your brother go? I don't know. Home, maybe. But I have to wait here for Myrtle's friends to dry out. Do you know an old man called Leonard Shoulder? No, miss. Have you heard of a place called Hobbs Barrow? I... I have, yes. You have? We aren't Ooh. supposed to talk about it. Why oh. not? Would you like to go there? Yes, I would very much like to. I'll tell you where it is if you find Myrtle for me. Fair enough. Will? Yes, but don't tell anyone about it or I'll be told off. Okay. I promise. Please find Myrtle first. I miss her. I will. Where do you live? Our home is on the other side of the village, miss. Maybe Wally went back there. Mm -hmm. Or maybe he's left her out on the moors. Poor Myrtle. I'm going to kick him so hard. Goodbye. Bye, miss. Remarkable. A gargantuan fossilised ammonite. This would look fantastic on my mantelpiece. Oh. I do enjoy the charm of a babbling beck. The water is icy cold. All right. Good day to you, Cyril. I'll do, lass. What are you up to, Cyril? Keeping an eye on that bleeding railway station. That's what. Thankfully, oh. no one got off the last train. Really hate that station, don't you? Oh, I curse Midland Railway for bringing their damn line through Bewley. This is our town, our land. It is yes, no sir. place for outsiders. So you keep saying. Anyway, no more trains today. Almost time to celebrate with an ale, I think. I could do with one oh. myself. You pay in. Uh, no. I found Mr. Shoulder's house today, but he wasn't home. Why the bleeding hell should I care, lass? It's fine. I'm looking for Hobbs Barrow. Do you know where it is? Mind your own business, lass. Fine. You really are quite helpful, aren't you? Bah. What do you okay. make of Henry Long? Aha. Uh -huh. oh, an idiot who thinks that station's a good idea. Can you imagine? Strangers pouring into Bewley. Turns the stomach, that does. Maybe he has a point. You could travel. Bah. You're an outsider. I'd expect you to have such a bad opinion. But Henry, he's a Bewley lad. We've had the odd Barney or two in the pub over it all. I can imagine. Can I buy you a drink, Cyril? Now? Yes. Come on, then, lass. Follow me. Cool. Okay, found the solution. So then, it turns around and says, Why is a dog like a tree? And I says, I don't know. And he says, Because they both lose their bark once they're dead. <laughs> Very droll, Cyril. Well, oh. it's been a pleasure, but I must be off. Aye, lass. Ta for the drink. You're not too bad for an outsider. <laughs> cool. Okay. Figured it out all on my own. Haha. I can't think of anything. Gravedigger. Oh. Hey. Hello. Good day. Can I buy you another drink? I suppose one more ale won't hurt. I shall take you up on your offer. Let us make our... Okay, cool. Let's get these two. To think, if that station hadn't been built, we would never have met. 
Right. This'd be the Midland Railway. Idiot! You? Aha! That station is the worst decision this village has ever made! Oh boy. Cyril Farnaby. A miserable man with miserable ideas. I will change your mind even if it kills me. Uh Cool. The drag job runs some of the piece of property will be more large sold off. But first I need to get my stuff. Locked, as expected. I need to get inside without attracting too much attention. He's currently debating the merits of the railway station at the inn. Yes, I, I know, I, I, I know. Why is he... Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. I'll leave Cyril and Henry to their grand debate. I have nothing else to. How am I supposed to get in? I can't think of any. Hello there. My name's Thomasina. Yeah? What's yours? Wally. Do you know a man called Leonard Shoulder? No. What do you know about Lord Panswick? I heard he owns the whole county. Have you met him? No. He lives out on the moor somewhere. But everyone does what he tells them to. Why's that? Because he has a lot of money. Nah. Have you heard of a place called Hobbs Barrow? No. Jane tells me you've taken Myrtle away. And what if I did? That's a bit mean, don't you think? She kicked me! Look at this bruise on my leg! Okay. That does look quite bad. Why did she kick you? Because she's a little goblin! You don't know what she can be like! Besides, Myrtle is gone now. I've given her to the fair folk. That'll teach her. Excuse? Who are the fair folk? The little people of the moors. I gave Myrtle to them. Little people? You don't mean fairies, do you? We call them fair folk round here. Wally, there is no such thing as fairies. It's two, and I gave them a doll. Where can I find these fair folk? Bye. Follow the tinker of their tiny belts. I hear them when the wind dies. They dance around their little house. But where is this? little house just listen for the bells you'll find it <sighs> don't think about bringing that door back that'll just bring bad luck for all of us goodbye hmm. the road disappears over the horizon i see nothing but moorland fine Can't think of anything. <laughs> I'm not sure if these are poisonous or edible. It looks like something has been buried in the middle. I'd better not touch them. They could be. Po it looks like something has been. The moors stretch into the distance. I don't wish to wander aimlessly. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's where the doll is, but mm, I need to get my stuff back.
funny. The Devil's Toe, a local landmark. Inside. I'm going to get in there without attracting too much attention. Well, I also... I've no desire... I not see a ladder around somewhere. Bucket has seen better days. The bucket is rusty and full of holes. This must belong to someone. I should leave it alone. There's nothing else I wish. There's nothing else I. The sign is well out of reach. The sign is well out. Attracting too much attention. Okay, like how? Royal Mail, Postmaster's residence. This must be the local post office. The door is still locked. This key doesn't fit here. That's a peculiar idea. There is a single match remaining inside. What? What? What am I missing? This house looks pleasant. He's currently debating the... How? What? Why? Come on. Fine. that I'm doing this. I managed to figure out how to do the... Mm. What? 
hairpin. What are you talking about? Use the hairpin on the. What are you talking about? Oh my god. I've stored my case in there. A box within a box. Cool. I've a box with. I've hung my dress inside. Aside from that. What? Whoa. Jammed shut. The wood must have warped over the years. What? What? can't think of anything excuse me do you think anyone would mind if I borrowed this trowel you help yourself dear just be sure to put it back of course thank you it is more blessed to give your dolly under the tree a fox ate it madame yes it did fetch it now won't you then i'll fix your supper yes madame it's the gateway to the fairy kingdom hello fairies Josephine, I won't let the foxes eat you. Oh. Who's that you have there, little bird? Josephine. She introduced me to the fairies. Oh, fairies, you say? Yes, Daddy. Do you believe in fairies? Of course. Do you see those mushrooms over there? Yes. That's a gateway to their kingdom. That's where Josephine and I go to talk to the fairies. Now, listen to me, Thomasina. Yes? You're old enough now to hear this. There's no such thing as fairies or talking dolls, my little bird. What do you mean? I'm sorry, my dear child. Oh. I do not wish to upset you. I just want to make sure that you understand the difference between fantasy and reality. Josephine is just a doll, and fairies do not exist. Oh. Daddy? Science is the great antidote to the poison of enthusiasm and superstition. Please always remember that. 
If you hear anything about fairies or the like again, know that it's hogwash. Wow, what dude. Is Jeez. Hogwash. Did Wally anyway. bury the doll, I wonder? Right, anyway. Apparently I need to do this first. Ew. This must be Jane's ragdoll. Perhaps these wriggling worms are the fair folk young Wally was so fearful of. Mm -hmm. How strange. There is a hairpin pierced through the arm. This may come in handy. I'll keep it. Awesome. At least I shall not return from Bewley empty-handed. Alright. Before I return the doll... Kenneth taught me this useful trick. A hairpin is much more than a hair accessory. A few wiggles and this lock should spring right open. Don't ask how we know that. It's not important. I've snapped the hairpin in the process, but I managed to unlock the door. Oh well. Let's open this envelope. There's a note inside. Ms. Bateman, I beg your forgiveness. A matter of grave urgency has arisen in London, and I cannot join you in Bewley. I pack your usual equipment and pray you will find local assistance in my absence. Yes, totally normal to know how to pick a lock. Sure. Look forward to seeing you upon my ret your return. Yours faithfully, Kenneth Murdoch. How very frustrating. I wonder what happened. I'd better get this to the alley before Mr. Long comes back. Do not make me happy. Moving a fully laden crate through the village square was no easy task. Somehow, no one was there to witness it. Weird. But I didn't give up, because I never give up, do I, Mother? I am as stubborn as my father, as you liked to remind me. Cool. What's in the box? What's in the crates? Wait. Where is my money? It's yeah, not in here. It. Kenneth, you absolute liability of a man. It looks like everything else is in here. Picks, specimen trays, shovels. Oh, my chisel, I'll take that. Ah, oh, my lantern. It feels light. There mustn't be any oil inside. Uh, I'll leave the rest in the crate. Stanley assured me things would be safe here. No money and no assistant. This is most inconvenient. Still, I've been in worse situations. I've got a tab at the inn for now. I'll worry about money later. I great. must find that barrow and get on with the excavation. Anyway, I can't think of anything. <sighs> okay, kiddo, I found you your doll. I present to you, Myrtle. Myrtle! Yay. Hooray! I missed you so much! Now, I believe we had a deal. Hide and seek! No. Come back! Dang it. It's in moments like these I thank myself for not having children. Well, 
Let's see. Well, that has a fuel I need some paraffin or for some more paraffin. Get out of there. Don't make me come in. Fine. It's really dark. I need, can't see a thing. Curses. The hole is too small for me to fit through. <laughs> I was always happiest with a trowel in my hand. Ooh. Uncovering hidden worlds within the earth itself, clod by clod. That should do uh -huh. it. <laughs> Jane! Jane? Jane, come out this instant! Uh -huh. I can't see a damned thing in here. I need a light source. Where the heck am I going to find paraffin? Where would I find paraffin? <laughs> Hold on. I have nothing else to offer. Good day. Yes. I was wondering if you might be able to spare some lantern oil. I don't have much to spare, lass. Paraffin is as rare as hen's teeth in these parts. How much coin do you have? None, I'm afraid. If you're in a bind, I can trade you a small amount. A trade, you say? Aye. What can I trade you for some lantern oil? Surprise mm. me. Thanks for your time. Aye. I think Speak I know what to you do. Later. All right, I have an idea. Gonna steal it. Well, thankfully we don't need to steal a candle because we have a lantern. We just need to fill it. This is the wrong spot. Fizzle fossil. Yeah, but it looks it, it's appropriate. Splendid. I've managed to extract it in one piece. Yes. Mostly it's just find this kid. It's the whole process. Would you trade some of your paraffin for this fossilized no ammonite, Mr. Crozier? Now then, tis a beauty that. Oh. It looks familiar. I'll take it off your hands. Wonderful. Let me fetch some paraffin from inside. There you are. Thank you, Mr. Crozier.
My lantern is fueled and ready for action. Awesome. No more walking around. Like, nonsense. We're done. Right. Let's put this lantern to good use. Yay. Child, why did you crawl into the creepy... <laughs> dark hole. Jane, come out at once. Um. Jesus. That's her. It's me. Yeah. The hell. Jane. Silly, what are you doing in that smelly old badger's hole? You were in there. No, I weren't. Yes, you were. Where were you? Not true. I was hiding behind that tree over there. I got bored of waiting for you. So where can I find Hobbs Barrow? Go north from the church graveyard, up the hill. You'll see some muddy fields on the horizon. That's Mr. Bryden's farm. Hobbs Barrow is there. Don't tell any grown-ups I told you. And thanks for getting Myrtle back. My pleasure. Uh. Thank you, Jane. You've been a great help. As I trudged through the barren moors, with only the odd sheep for company, I reflected upon my visit to Bewley thus far. The enigmatic Mr. Shoulder and his puzzling disappearance. The townsfolk of Bewley, who had made it as difficult as they could for me to find Hobbs Barrow. The suspicion, the wariness in their eyes. Only now I know it was actually fear. Ooh. In the end, it was the innocence of a child, the young Jane, that condemned me to my fate. Okay. The gate opens out into a vast tilled field. Easy girl. Right, I can wait. I'm not fond of goats at the best of times, but this one seems particularly disagreeable. Hmm. Anyway. What do you want? My name is Thomasina Bateman. Mr. Bryden, I presume. Aye. What do you want, lass? Oh. I understand Hobbs Barrow is located on your land. Oh. Well, yes. Why do you ask? I am an antiquarian, Mr. Bryden. I'm writing a volume on the Barrows of England. Oh. I suppose you'll be wanting to dig about it. If at all possible, Mr. Bryden. I was invited to Bewley by Mr. Leonard Shoulder, who told me such an excavation would be possible. Leonard Shoulder? Ha! I haven't seen him in years. The last I heard he were on death's door. There's to be no more digging there, lass. Not since it went so badly last time. Wait, what? Was there a previous excavation of Hobbs Barrow? Aye. My brother dug it up. 
Must have been, what, 25 years ago. You see, whatever he found inside, well, it drove him mad. Oh? Aye. I moved back here to look after him. Poor bastard oh. hanged himself not long after. I, I'm sorry, Mr. Bryden. That's terrible. Aye. Time passes, but it were an awful thing. Tell me about yourself, Mr. Bryden. I live here with my wife, and I might be long in tooth, but I can still run this farm without too much help. What did your brother find? Samuel. Samuel were his name. Sorry, what did Samuel find in the barrow? I don't know, but something went wrong. Afterward, he could barely speak. You couldn't make out oh. a word like... That must have been hard. He lost a hand in that excavation too, you know. Goodness me, how? I try hard not to speculate on what might have happened, lass. I'd see him disappear into that barrow, dragging timber him with him. You'd hear him hammering away for hours. I offered him help, but he'd have none of it. Soon enough, he blocked the entrance off. To look at it now, you'd never know the thing we dug up. The landers reclaimed it. Who else was involved in the excavation? Two others, I believe. Outsiders, perhaps. I can't say for sure. I think they left town pretty swiftly afterwards. I lived in Bakewell at the time. I only moved back here to look after Samuel. I took over the farm when he passed away. I see. What can you tell me about your farm? Samuel's fair to side. We're a fortunate family. The soil is fertile here. Crops grow without too much trouble. All the other farmers around here raise livestock. Even Lord Panswick. We grow up feed for them. Most fortunate, Mr. Bryden. Is your wife home? She's out in fields, lass. Pulling weeds. The curse of such fertile soil. <laughs> Forty years we've been married. I couldn't do it without her, you see. How splendid. Aye. My wife is a fine woman. Are you married, lass? No, no. I've had my fair share of proposals, Mr. Bryden, but that's not the life for me. Marriage is an important institution. You'll find a man one day. Hmm. I manage rather well without one, Mr. Bryden. <sighs> Anyway... You haven't seen Mr. Shoulder for some time? I hear about him now and then, but it must be a good few years since I set eyes on him. He hasn't been here to visit Hobbs Barrow? Not to my knowledge. I heard he's beset by ailments. Don't leave his home often. Hmm. How odd. I assumed he'd spoken to you about my visit. Not at all. What can you tell me of Lord Panswick? He keeps us going. Most of our crops go to feed his animals. What is he like? Oh, I've hardly laid eyes on him. He sends his workers here to pick up the crops. I see. That's quite an intimidating goat you own. Mm. Ah, the old girl does a better job of protecting this farm than any hound would. <laughs> she still produces a lot of milk for us, so we forgive her temper. You say Mr. Shoulder is at death's door. What exactly ails him? I'm unsure. It's just what I've heard. I won't want to speculate on matters that are not my business. Mr. Bryden, may I please have your permission to excavate Hobbs Barrow? No. Have you not been listening, lass? Samuel found something in there that's best left to rot. No digging here, lass. Ooh. Wouldn't you like to find out more about what Samuel found in there? Perhaps. But Samuel boarded up that barrow for a reason. You don't want to tempt the same fate, lass. Perhaps I can at least see Hobbs Barrow. Hmm. I suppose you've come a long way to be here, lass. All the way from London, Mr. Bryden. Hmm. Have you any proof of all you've told me? You wish to see proof of what, Mr. Bryden? I can't let any Tom, Dick or Harry wander around me fields. What proof have you of your claims? You wish to see proof- I can't let any top- What proof have you- Thanks for your time. ta now. Mm -hmm. Here is proof that Mr. Shoulder invited me to Bewley in order to excavate Hobbs Barrow. Leonard making bold promises, I see. Don't make me regret this. But yes, you can have a look at it. Thank you. Any road. Once you've set your eyes on it, you won't be wanting outdo with it. The place gives one a queer feeling. Alright. So where can I find it? 
Through that gate to your left. Just head straight across the top to the field there. After ten minutes or so, you'll see Barra. Set on a hill ahead. Thank you again, Mr. Bryden. I really do appreciate it. There's nothing else I wish... I probably should have brought my umbrella. Mm, probably. Perhaps I could take a closer look. Oh. A R. I haven't a clue what that can be referring to. Finally, here it is. Hobbs Barrow. Yeah. Big old Indeed, pile of a barrel dirt. of a most unusual rectangular form. I've not seen something like this since West Kennet Long Barrow. Yes, this shall make a fine entry for my book. What secrets do you conceal, I wonder? and sweet. Three, two, one. You can open your eyes now, Thomasina. Come. Are you ready for your first excavation? Yes, Daddy. Capital. Make sure you remember everything I've taught you. I have a feeling you might find something special. How exciting! Mm. I'll be watching from the steps, my little bird. Good luck! Oh. Thank you, Daddy. Now I'm ready. Piles of dirt. Nothing here. Mom's gonna be mad you're taking up flowers. No treasures here. little bird. Your first successful excavation. That urn you're holding is very old and precious. Take good care of it, all right? I will, Daddy. I promise. That is a... That is probably a cheap urn that... I do have a feeling there is something exceptional to be discovered here. I must gain Mr. Bryden's permission to excavate. Darkness falls quickly here. I should make my way back to the inn. I shouldn't disturb him at this late hour. Alright. I 
is in a shabby state, but the shop appears to be a cobbler's. That's... Good evening, Mr. Crozier. Evening. Thanks again for the fossil, lass. It is truly a beauty. You're most welcome. How long have you been collecting fossils? Ever since I were a boy. The moors look a barren place, but there are plenty of fossils to be found in the rock formations. All mm. manner of creatures to uncover. Such a playground for a young lad. What's your favorite piece in your collection? The ammonite you gave me today. Oh. The most recent is always the best. Indeed. Ah. What about you, lass? Do you collect out? I do. You see, I'm writing a book on the barrows of England. It shall be called Vestiges of the Antiquities in Rural England. I document Whoa. all my findings. But what do you collect? Pottery, tools and such. Bones too, no doubt. No, I leave those in place. You've got a morbid heart, lass. Mm. Fussing about in old graves like that. We're not dissimilar in that we both take an interest in the remains of the long gone. I suppose you have a point there. How's your book coming along, then? Very well, thank you. Though I'm rather keen to begin my chapter on Hobbs Barrow. Thanks for your time. Aye. Speak to you later. Good evening, Miss Bateman. Good evening, Stanley. I found Hobbs Barrow. Oh, hey. remember what I said, Miss Bateman? Yes, yes. There are stories connected to that place. Yeah, yeah. Yes, stories you won't elaborate on, I might add. Don't worry about me, Stanley. I'm quite capable of warding off imagined fiends. I mm. have no doubt, but please leave that place be. I've come this far. There's no turning back now. That's precisely what worries me. Goodbye. See you soon. Good evening, gentlemen. Oh. What are you going to do about him? If he thinks he can take her away from here, he's got another thing coming. I am going to knock his bloody block off. Okay. <laughs> In fact, I can think of a better punishment. Oi, what do you want, lady? Piss off. You heard the man. Charming. Oh. Is that really a game you should be playing while possibly drunk? Good evening, sir. Uh, I'll leave you to it. Yeah, okay. Wow. It's Herbert, the local stray. Hello again, Cyril. You're still here? Did Mr. Yes. Long convince you of the virtues of Bewley Station? What the hell do you think? Now bugger Oof. off and leave me to me drink. He seems even more wound up than usual. All right. To do it. Oh, well. Go to bed, I guess. Time for bed. Tomorrow I shall convince Mr. Bryden to allow me to begin my excavation. Miss Bateman. Hey. Ah, how are yeah. you? Tired. Gonna buy you a drink? Uh... Sure, why not? Hurt? Excellent. I feel bad about what happened last night. Uh -huh. I'm sorry, I can't remember it. That's all right, Mr. Tillett. Alcohol can do all sorts of damage to one's memory. I was thinking that maybe if we had another drink tonight, I might remember what happened. I'm um, mm. not sure that's logical. But yeah. worth trying? I don't need any further convincing. Take Fine. your seat, Bateman. I shall return with the goods. Oh good, you're paying. <laughs> Probably, I hope. To Leonard's shoulder. Whatever he may be. I've been meaning to ask you something. 
Yes? Why did Leonard Shoulder ask you to dig up Hobbs Barrow? Despite his disappearing act the previous evening, not to mention his questionable sobriety, I decided Mr. Tillett was to be my ally. I spoke again of Mr. Shoulder's letter, his proposed excavation and my status as an antiquarian and barrow digger. He was fascinated and quite excited at the prospect of meeting the soon-to-be author of a real-life book. Ooh. You must find all manner of riches on your digs. Barrow digging is not all success, Mr. Tillett. Often I'll come across the likeliest of sites steeped in promise. We set to work with shovel and pick and all the other barrow opening paraphernalia you can imagine. Every stone carefully taken down, every shovel full of earth put dutifully through the sieve, and we find nothing. Or you may find a miserable remnant of animal bone or a shard of pottery hardly to be recognized from the peat in which it decayed. Sometimes it's as if some Neolithic humorist prepared an elaborate practical joke for your special benefit. It still sounds much more exciting than spending your days sitting in England's most remote railway station. <sighs> anyway... Are you alright, Mr. Tillett? I've had another argument with Agnes. Your wife? Ooh. Aye. She didn't want me coming to the plough tonight. Truth is, I've been drinking my life away since my mother passed. Oh, that's Ooh. terrible. I'm sorry for your loss. You're kind, Miss Bateman. Thank you. It's been a year since the old girl left us. She had a horrible end. Wasting away, day by day. Consumption got her. She went no but bones by the end. I can't get the image out of my mind. She were everything to me. I'm so sorry. Ooh. I apologize for going on, Miss Bateman. It's not appropriate. Don't worry, Mr. Tillett. I appreciate your openness. I used to love going for walks out in the moor, my mother and I, ever since I were a little one. She'd get a tear in her eye as she looked out upon it. She loved this land. I asked Mr. Crozier to build a bench, which we've erected at her favourite lookout spot on the moors. Margaret's Hello. Lookout, we called it. Aye. That's a beautiful tribute. Aye. If you take a seat there, do keep her in your thoughts, won't you? Of course, Hello. Mr. Tillett. I can relate in some manner. My father had an accident when I was very young. He's still alive, but he can neither move nor speak. He spends his entire life bedbound and incapable of communicating or looking after himself in any way. How dreadful. He was a barrow digger himself, an antiquarian of some renown. He taught me so much, even though I was so young. I think writing this book is my way of carrying on his work. It helps me reclaim those earlier memories of him and I visit him often to tell him all about my excavations. Can he hear you? I've no idea. The doctors aren't sure. I'd do anything to make him better, Mr. Tillett. I'd do anything to bring him back to the man he was. I am in a state of suspended mourning for a man caught between life and death. Dreadful. Just dreadful. We all have our weaknesses. Mine just happens to be my father. And what of your mother? A cold woman. We haven't talked in quite some time. I think she blamed me for my father's accident somehow. You were but a child. Indeed. She thus saw it fit that a governess should raise me as she spent her life grieving for my father. Well then, I propose a toast. A toast to what? A shared sense of loss. I'll toast to that, Arthur. Aww. Now then, enough of this wallowing. Let us be merry. Another round. I really shouldn't. But I did. And another after that. Oh, and another. Boy. The frustrations of my visit to Bewley slipped away with each swill of Stanley's finest ale. We had great fun that night, Mr. Tillett and I. I treasure the memory. Go on, then. Let's hear those pipes. I uh, mustn't. Oh boy. Sing the song. You're incorrigible. Please. You'll oh make a sad man happy. Oh, oh, all right then. Oh boy.
clasps, okay. celts, and arrowheads I'll try to claw within my clutch. And if a shield I should espy, I'll vow there ne'er was such. With popish tricks and relics rare, the priests their flocks do gull. In casting out the earth, take care. Huzzah! I've found a skull! Okay. Weird. Anyway. Oh, cool. We replaced the candle. Okay. But I think we're going to call it there for tonight. Because, yeah, uh, already kind of gone a little longer than normal, normal, but hey, made much progress, and <laughs> I mean, yeah, I, I, well, anyway, um, so yeah, I believe I have some plans for next Friday, which means I will be streaming next Thursday, <sighs> it'll be the 31st. Yeah, oh, yeah, that will be the 31st. First, it'll be special Halloween stream. Yay. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, until that, then, um, yeah, I guess, <laughs> you know, uh, check me out on YouTube and Twi Twitch. Check out my website and check out on Blue Sky. Sky, and, uh, you know, other than that, uh, have a good one. Bye.